Okay, okay. You may or may not recall my series on the farm truck when I got a 99 flatbed C3500 HD and we went through all the brakes, kingpins, steering, uh, did the transmission. There was a cracked bell housing, so I put a new pump in the transmission and reinstalled that and welded up the whole bell housing. Um, if you don't know that one, feel free to check it out. Uh, so that brings me to this one. This is a big old roll-off wrecker. And it recently had kingpins done by the shop that, uh, the local spring shop that I was talking about in the farm truck videos. I think there's like two years on this set of kingpins. There's 293,000 miles on the truck. But this one, not sure if you can hear that or not, but this one's already loose. So I don't know if it was reamed too much or if it didn't get enough grease or whatever the case may be, but it's already worn. The other side feels tight, but my job today is to replace both sides. So it's time to tear down. I have the blocks underneath that front axle, so that's my adequate jack stands. I'll be using my, my jack and a chain to press the pins out, so uh, there's also going to be support where I'm working, when I'm working, on moving the vehicle. So everything is good and safe as far as structure goes, and I'm going to get to work. It's a pretty uh, humid and kind of rainy, wet day today. So a good reminder to throw some oil in the old air wrench. So it's also a great idea to check other people's work. I've got this mag base set up on the axle and then I've got the indicator set up on this brake screw because the brake assembly bolts to the spindle, not the axle. And I can make the noise, but my dial indicator's not moving at all. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put the mag base, I don't know if this is aluminum or not, hopefully it's metallic. I'm gonna put the mag base here and then indicate the rotor, because I think this is actually wheel bearings, not anything to do with the kingpin. So I ended up putting the mag base on the rotor and then indicating to the, the brake caliper and I definitely have slop. So I found the problem, it's just wheel bearings. Uh, and it, this bearing could be good, but considering the amount of work that this truck does and the fact that it can't really have down days, I'm waiting on the customer to see if we wanna just replace the wheel bearing. Uh, if it's had slop too long, it's gonna be worn. And we don't want to just snug it up and send it down the road. So uh, this is my setup here. And I just had to find a, a spot where the base could actually, you know, stay in place. And then I indicated to the, the brake assembly. Once again is hooked to the spindle, which is tight on the axle. The kingpins are good. Uh, and then I'm able to get myself some slop when I move this up and down. So there's my problem. Just waiting on the customer to tell me what they want. Uh, I really want to be fluid and honest and don't really want to pull the wool over their eyes when um, they're car people too. Time out. I don't care if they're car people or not. I don't want to pull the wool over their eyes. I want to be honest no matter what. So just figured I'd say that. So I ended up getting the call that we're going to do wheel bearings on both sides. We're going to do brake pads and axle seals. So that way the whole front end is good and tight and stops well. It is nice because those pads, that one on the inside is not that bad. But the outside, excuse me, the it's backwards. The outside one's not bad, but the inside one's pretty toast on this side. And then over on this side, the outside has about an eighth inch of pad life left. And the inside's pretty worn. The inside's good on this side, gee. 
And then uh, as far as the wheel bearing goes, it's it's got quite a bit of play on that axle nut. And uh, so I don't know if it just wasn't wasn't torqued correctly with some, some preload and then spinning and then you release it and then put some more preload on. Or if, uh, if maybe it just wasn't tightened down correctly. There's some dimples in these gaps that I believe are supposed to retain this nut from being able to move, but I can move it just, just with a little wiggle. So it's definitely gonna be better when it leaves here today. Uh, it is a little bit rainy but it's now just a simple front end job, which isn't terrible. Yeah, for my own sake of record keeping, and uh, just to explain, this, this outside right here should be crushed down with a cold chisel, with a, with a chisel and a hammer into these notches here. And that's what kind of prevents this from being able to spin. But if I just tap on this, it's back and right out. There's nothing holding it wherever it was preloaded. So that's the issue is that just one step, just taking a cold chisel and popping those down, that was the whole issue. And uh, it's, a, it's a good thing, you know, that this is here today because the brakes are pretty much toast, but it could have prevented a whole lot more maintenance if one more step was taken. Well, I got it off. I ended up putting the wheel and tire on backwards and using that as kind of a, a weight to leverage it off. Now, once you get it to this point, it's practically like working on grandpa's old Buick. I noticed a lot of rust and buildup here. And so I used some gunk degreaser and a wire brush to smooth all the garbage off of that. This is the wheel seal surface and if that's all dry and dirty, it's not really gonna seal very well. So I'm gonna make sure that's well greased before I reassemble. And that way it'll stay, you know, lubricated and not tear that seal. But everything looks good in here. I, I made sure with that wheel and tire to, uh, to check for my readout again. I did notice that this is part of the spindle, not the axle. So where I had the mag base, of course there wasn't going to be any any readout so i moved the mag base down here checked it again visually followed and uh, and noticed that between the bracket here and the rotor there was quite a bit of deflection so i'm sure that the wheel bearings were the problem you'll notice like i said there's no dimples where the repair had been done before and this is what i'm talking about right here where somebody used a cold chisel to make sure that that could not move. See, this assembly has a key on the outer part, uh, but this is the nut that's allowed to move and tighten up. And the other side literally just popped right apart. So it would have just worn itself more and more to get looser and looser. This side's uh, got a lot more grease in it as well. So I don't know if it's been apart recently for any repairs, but, uh, but they're both gonna come apart they're going to get new bearings, get everything good and clean, get all the old grease out, repack the bearings, and uh, we'll be good to go. I've got this broken breaker bar, and it's a great punch. But I've mentioned this before. I figured I should just say it again. When you're doing a punch, don't do a little pre-tap. Just get up there and hit it. because when you're doing that, your punch is bouncing. So if you don't have a good base the first time, or if you do have it the first time, you might not have it the second time. So now we got all the races popped out. It's time to get all the grease cleaned out of here and get the new races in and uh, start reassembly. Okay, I've got the bulk of the grease cleaned out of here. I've got the race um, areas cleaned up. And so now it's time to drive the new races in and start assembly. So the new race needs to be pressed in. And in order to do that, 
you know, it has to get past the wheel seal area and it has to get down onto the lip that it surface mates to. So I took the old race and I spun it on my belt sander and took a couple thousands off. So it's now a slip fit. And then I put it face to face because this side is rounded. This side is a little more square. So I put it face down and then use a heavy piece of three quarter inch plate and a pretty decent hammer and just tonk, tonk, tonk. Drove it in to the point where I couldn't get to the, to the ring anymore because there's the uh, ABS sensor. So I ended up just getting it here, spun it a couple times, tonked it. And then just to be sure that it was seated, I took a 5 thousandths feeler gauge because it's flexible, but it's still rigid. And I just put it underneath the race to make sure that it can't go down any further. I wouldn't want to press this most of the way in, set on my preload, and then after a couple miles down the road, it drops down a little farther and we're back to our first problem. All right, so I've got the outside race driven in as well. And I ground this old one down the same way, but it still got hung up a little bit. So I grab my channel locks or uh, my vice grips, slide hammer deal, and just grabbed a hold of it and it slid right out. Now, on this one, I could hear an audible landing. It, it hit bottom, but I still double checked it with my feeler gauge. Now I'm going to flip it over again. I'm gonna grease the inside bearing. I'm gonna rotate it in the race a few times and then grease it again in my press. And then I'm gonna insert the seal and then slide it on the truck. And everything's gonna be good. Now the seal is in place and I can just verify that it is flush with the inside of the hub. And now it's time to put on the truck. Make sure you grease that seal really well when you're putting it all on because we want it to slide really well for a long time. So this is all assembled dry. I'm going to torque that nut to 77 pound feet and then back off 90 degrees. Now that's the manual spec on this one. I'm going to also rotate it, do another 77 and back it off 90 degrees, rotate it, check to see how it feels because there's always going to be a little bit excess grease when you put it together and you kind of have to drive it to where it's going to be all metal on metal inside and out. So I ended up having to get a little crafty with a 34 millimeter socket but I was able to get those torque down backed them off 90 degrees spun them a little bit and torqued them to 77 again and then backed off 90 degrees I ended up gaining probably from that mark to where they are now on both sides uh, so not a huge difference but it was well worth just having that extra step now as I pointed out before, I'm gonna take a cold chisel and I'm gonna bash that uh, outer ring into that nut so it can't back off anymore. Now I've got the front end back together on both sides. It's time to do the brakes and part of that is going to be cleaning the slide so everything uh, operates just fine. There's no hang up and Everybody's going to be happy. All right, here we are. We got some anti-squeak grease on here, some brake lube. Got brand new big old fat pads, good hardware, good bearings. Still got good kingpins. We are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and torque those lug nuts. I'm going to take it for a spin around the block and retorque those lug nuts and put them wheel covers on, we are done. Hey, I just wanna thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something. Um, please comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You know, like I said, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you gained something from watching this. 
If not, please tell me how I can improve. Have a good day.